Hello, I'm Guillaume Goy from Sierra Grenoble and University of Limoges, and today I will present a new key recovery section attack on HQC with a chosen ciphertext strategy. Uh, this work is a joint work with uh, Antoine Razo and Philippe Gabriel. As you all know, HQC is a candidate for the fourth round of the post quantum list contest. The sectional attacks and protection were criteria for the third round selection and could be important for the fourth round standardization. Furthermore, the decoding step of code-based cryptography are known to be vulnerable to sectional attack and HQC is no exception to this rule. A few sectional attacks already exist targeting HQC. These three sectional attacks target the old version of HQC based on BCH codes. Among them, two timing attacks lead to a constant time implementation of the decoders of HQC. In 2020, Chamberger et al. presented a first channel attack against uh, the BCH version of HPC using a chosen ciphertext attack. By knowing the error correction capability of the BCH code, they were able to recover the static secret key. Since 2020, authors of HPC changed the public error correction codes for a concatenated Reed-Muller and Reed-Solomon codes. Against this new version, a new timing attack used the rejection sampling to deduce information about the, sec the secret key. In 2022, an horizontal attack exploit a single HUC traces to recover the exchange message. This attack has a huge computa computational cost. In 2022, Chamberger and et al. adapt their attack to the new RMRS uh, version of HPC. They use the same strategy as the previous attack against BCH codes. Finally, uh, our attack in 2022 which is also based on the chosen ciphertext attack, and I will present it now. For this presentation, we need two basic definitions. The support of a vector, which is the location of the non-zero coordinates. Uh, please note that in a binary case, knowing the support of a vector is equivalent to knowing the vector m by nothing. Then I define the amine weight of a vector as the number of its non-zero coordinates or the cardinality of the support. This scheme entirely describes amine quasi-cyclic, uh, I will uh, talk about it with HUC. We start with a message that is encoding with a public code to obtain a code word. We deliberately add an error to this code word to mask the information. Note that the error is deri derived from the public key. This error has an amine weight higher than the error correction capability of the code, such that the publicly known decoder cannot correct it. The only way to decode is first to reduce the size of the error with the secret key, and then the error is small enough to recover the initial message with the decoder. Given this shared message, one is able to deduce a shared key. More formally about the key generation, the secret key is composed of two randomly sampled vectors, x and y, of small amine weight. And the public key s is generated to be the syndrome of the secret key. The vector h, which describes a cyclic parity check matrix, is also a part of the public key. Given this information, the secret key is protected by the syndrome decoding problem. In the encryption, we can see the encoded message MG, where G is the public, is the public generator matrix of the concatenated Reed-Muller and Reed-Solomon, for which we know an efficient decoding algorithm. We can also see how the error is generated with the public key. This error allows to mask the message. U and V are transmitted for the description. The decryption algorithm only consists in decoding the incoming message. This is done with the secret key Y, which is the only part used in HQC. Given that the code C and the decoder of C are publicly known, the security of HQC do not rely on the choice of the error correcting code C. In the last version of HQC, Author choose to instantiate this code with a concatenated, concatenated Reed-Muller and Reed-Solomon codes. To understand, uh, to understand how the concatenated code works, we start with a message of length k1, which is the dimension of the external code, here the Reed-Solomon code. We obtain a code word of length n1 after the Reed-Solomon encoding. The size of this N1 element is exactly the dimension of the internal code K2. 
Each element can be encoded independently with the internal code, uh, here the Windmuller uh, code, to obtain a vector of size n1 times n2. To decode, the exact inverse operation is done. First, we have to decode independently each block of the Windmuller with the Windmuller decoder before decoding the n1 remaining block with the Ritz-Lehmann decoder. We emphasize that in the reference implementation of HQC, the decoding algorithm is implemented this way. The two decoding algorithms are independent and computed one after the other. The target of our attack is the Windmuller decoder. Uh, we will describe the Windmuller codes used for HQC and give their implementations. Regardless of the selected uh, security level, HQC uses the same Windmuller codes. This code has a dimension of 8 and a length of 128 over F2. Encoding is less easily done with a vector matrix multiplication with the generator matrix. Finally, the codes are duplicated 3 or 5 times depending on the security level. The final length of the code is either 384 or uh, 640 uh, depending on the security level. We focus only on the first security level for this paper and therefore on the left parameters. The first order Windmuller codes are Adamar codes. After removing the multiplicity in order to decode them, one way is by applying the Adamar transform or its fast alternative. Among the returned value, the peaks or local maximum gives the decoded message. We recover this message by applying the fine peaks function. To obtain the multiplicity, the exponent sum algorithm is applied. This is an addition over the set of natural numbers. This function takes as input uh, the code word with multiplicity and add together the duplicated elements. As a result, each shell of the new array contains a value from 0 to the multiplicity. We stress that this function is not a binary addition. We'll see later that this function can create some particularities that we must consider. After the exponent sum function, we end up with a real Muller code word with multiplicity. McWilliams and Sloan showed that applying the Adamar transform to a Windmuller code word is equivalent to find the coset distribution of this code word. This leads to decoding with a maximum likelihood strategy. In order to compute to decode our 1M Windmuller code, one needs to compute the Adamar matrix 2 to the M. Applying the vector matrix multiplication with H2 to the M leads to h2 to the m squared addition and multiplication. Fortunately, this matrix can be decomposed as a product of m sparse matrix given by this formula. Each of these matrix has only two non-zero elements per column, which lead to compute only 2 to the m times m addition and multiplication. The first Adama transform used in HQC follows this algorithm. We find here seven loops corresponding to the parameter of the Windmuller code and to the decomposition of the Adamar matrix. This algorithm is a simple and fast way to compute the Adamar transform of any input vector. As output, this transform returns an array of lengths 128. The local maximum within this array is the value of the decoded message. The public key encryption scheme we just described, it turned into a key encryption mechanism using a quantum adapted Fujisaki Okamoto transform. The main differences from uh, the previous algorithm are the addition of the shared key derivation using hash function and the re-encryption step during the decapsulation. This re-encryption step is used to prevent HQC from chosen ciphertext attack. Indeed, invalid ciphertexts are detected and removed to prevent information leakage in the case of an algebraic attack. Nevertheless, our attack exploits a sanctioned leakage which occurs during the decoding step within the decrypt protocol. When the re-encryption step is applied, the leakage from the decoding algorithm is already acquired, allowing us to perform the attack despite invalid ciphertext. The purpose of our attack is to recover the static secret key Y of HQC. As mentioned earlier, Y is a unique part of the secret key 
that is used in HQC. To this end, we focus on the decoding of V minus U times Y. The attack starts with an observation. If one chooses U equals to 1 and V equals to 0, given the computation is in a field of characteristic 2, the ciphertext leads at decoding the secret key Y. Given that the secret key Y has a small amine weight, lower than the error correcting capability of the decoder, the closest word from Y is the all zero code word. Of course, this ciphertext is not valid with the re-encryption step. Nevertheless, as mentioned in the previous slide, this is not an issue for, for our attack. Then we will choose ciphertext in order to leak as much information as possible about Y. This is possible by finding collision with the support of Y, exploiting a decoding oracle. The decoding oracle we use is able to determine the number of errors that, we, that were corrected by the Reed-Muller decoder. Given that our attack aims at recovering the support of Y, we start by giving a description of the probability di distribution of Y. Among the n bits of the code word, which is the size of the ambient space, the decoder manipulates only n1 times n2 bits. The L remaining bits are trunk truncated and are useless for the decoding part. Then we can see Y as a concatenation of two parts, Y1 and Y2, of size respectively n1 times n2 bits and n bits. Given that the decoder manipulates only the first part of Y, we compute the probability of having ones in the second part of Y. We denote this probability by QK, where K is the expected number of 1 in the second part of Y. As described in, in this table, the second part of Y has amine weight of 0 with high probability. Furthermore, the more bits are in the first part of Y, the harder our attack is. That's the reason why we consider for the following that all the bits of Y are in the first part of Y. As explained it earlier, the Reed-Muller decoder manipulates the code, the code words by block. N1 blocks of size N2 are manipulated independently. We can rewrite Y as a concatenation of its blocks. The next point of interest is the distribution of the bits of Y within each block. We calculate the probability for a random blocks for a random block of having an amine weight of k. This table summarizes these probabilities. We observe that in most cases the amine weight of the block is lower than 5. Furthermore, the probability of having a block of amine weight more than 5 is low. We can consider that these categories represent all the possible inputs for the Adama transform. At this point, we state that during our attack, the input of the Adama transform are vectors of small amine weight. The probability of manipulating a vector decreases as its weight increases. The question we ask is, what is the behavior of the Adama transform when manipulating small amine weight vectors? Obviously, knowing the linearity of the Adama transform, the all zero vector will return the all zero output. Let's take a vector of amine weight 1. The Adama transform returns a vector with only 1 or minus 1 values. And we observe the same behavior for vectors of amine weight 2, 3, and so on. What interests us here is the distinction we can make between all these blue cases. Visually, these cases are very distinct, and we assume for the moment that we are able to distinguish them without, without any error. However, not all inputs vector of the amine weight transform are on this form. Indeed, the exponent and sum function can occur with a collision when removing the multiplicity. This collision creates what we call a higher magnitude error. For instance, a value 2 or more may, ap may appear in the input vector. Fortunately, this higher magnitude error of amine weight 1 has the same behavior as classical vectors of amine weight 2. We imply that these higher magnitude errors do not interfere too much with our attack. To be accurate, we calculated the probability of having higher magnitude error for all security levels. 
As you can see, this property is low, low less than 1%, which confirms the weak impact of this vector on our attack. We emphasize that during our attack test, we generated the same number of higher magnitude error as in a normal instance of HQC. Let's suppose that we are able to distinguish between the case presented before. In other words, let's suppose that we built a decoding oracle that is able to determine the aiming weight of the input vector of the Adama transform. As mentioned earlier, by selecting the ciphertext 1, 0, we decode the secret key Y. By applying our decoding oracle on each block of Y, this leads to know the aiming weights B0 to B n1-1 of each block of y. These values are used as reference value for the, for the following attack. The idea of the attack is to change uh, the value of v, uh, which is a part of the ciphertext, to slightly modify the decoded value. By applying again the decoding oracle, we are able to know the aiming weight of each block of v-y. These are the attack's value. The knowledge of V and the knowledge of the attack values give information about Y. By selecting intelligently successive values of V, our goal is to find V equals to Y and then recover the secret key. We will focus a particular block of Y. In the same way, the method can be extended to the other, to the other blocks. The idea is to try all the vectors V of aiming weight, aiming weight 1. We obtain two cases. On, on one end, if we have a collision with the support of y, then v minus 1 y will have the same aiming weight of y minus 1. In this case, the decoding oracle will return the reference value minus 1. We are able to detect the collision. On the other end, if the supports are dis disjointed, the aiming weight of v minus y will be the aiming weight of y plus 1. Thus, the decoding oracle returns the reference value plus 1. We are able to determine that v is not included in the supports of y. In both cases, we learn an information about y, either the location of a y, 1, either the location of a 0. Note that only remembering the location where the decoding oracle returns the reference value minus 1, is enough to recover the support of y. We show that, given such a decoding oracle, we are able to recover the support of each block of y. Our attack is even more powerful that we are able to parallelize our attack on the block of y. Indeed, the decoding of each block of y with the internal code are independent, which allows us to parallelize task. Now, we can calculate the minimal number of queries required to complete the attack. Given that we need to try all vectors of aiming weight 1 within a block, we need as many queries as the length of a block, which is 384. We notice that the gain is large compared to the almost uh, 18,000 bits of Y. Note that 384 is not the number of traces required by the attack, because we will see that we need more than one traces to earn one bit of information, with a good probability. Until now, we assume that we had a decoding oracle. Now, we will show how to build it with side channels. We realize our acquisition with an ARM Cortex-M4 microcontroller with a frequency of 168 MHz. We start by building the classes we want to distinguish. Each class contains the electromagnetic measurement traces of the computation of the Adama transform that takes as input vectors of given aiming weights. For each classes, we acquired 50,000 traces. We randomly sample the input vector with the randomness provided by the microcontroller, and we make sure that the number of higher magnitude error is the same as in a normal use of HQC. To verify that, this, that these classes are distinguishable, we applied a Welsh t-test leakage assessment. The statistical test takes, takes two sets S0 and S1 as input and uses the mean, variance, and cardinality 
to compute a t value given this formula. We emphasize, we emphasize that this test does not allow to distinguish between the traces, but only says that the sets are different with the high probabilities. For side channel application, we select a 4.5 threshold on the absolute t value. If the t value is greater than this threshold, we are confident about a statistical difference between the two sets. Otherwise, at first glance, nothing allows distinguishing the set with a linear classifier. In this slide, we plot the result of the wealth t test between all the classes we created. We plotted with red dashed line the 4.5 threshold. As a reminder, we have good hope if the blue curve exceeds the threshold. For each plot here, we observe some t-test peak, which is, a significant, which is significant for a statistical difference. We also, we also observe that the curves are divided into seven horizontal areas, which are exactly the seven loops of the Adama transform. As you can see, the curves do not have peaks in the same areas. Furthermore, some parts of the curve do not even have peaks. For instance, the beginning of the curve. We can conclude that these areas are uninformative for our attack. Therefore, we proceed to a selection of region of interest. We will focus our attack on the end of the traces. This strategy allows reducing the size of the traces used for the attack and then reducing the global computation time. Now, we want to find a method to exploit the statistical difference for creating our distinguisher. To, to create our decoding oracle, which distinguish among the classes we build, we use a machine learning algorithm, the Linear Decriminant Analysis, LDA, which is a linear classifier. We select a given number of traces from 1000 to 40,000 to train our classifier. We also select a K, the number of traces from the same class we use for testing the classifier. The K outputs of the classifier are then reconciled using a softmax, softmax strategy. The softmax strategy allows increasing the accuracy of the classifier, as we will see in the following slides. Here you have represented the accuracy of our classifier depending on the number of attack traces used simultaneously and also depending on the number of training traces. What is important to see here is the convergence of our attack accuracy to 1. This means that we are able to distinguish between all the classes any time. Thus, by applying our search on the support of the secret key Y, we are able to find it in all cases. As you can see, 50 attack traces are enough to reach 100% uh, accuracy. Now we have to talk about the cost of our attack. We saw in the previous scheme that 50 attack traces are enough to obtain a one accuracy for each bit of Y. Given our divide and conquer strategy, we have to repeat this attack on all the bits of a single block, which lead to a successful attack with 90,200 attack traces on HPC with a security level of 128 bits. Therefore, this attack requires less attack traces than already existing attacks to recover the secret key of HPC. In this slide, we present a countermeasure to prevent our attack from succeeding. The best way to protect against our attack is to mask the Adama transform algorithm by taking advantage of its linearity. Indeed, the input can be split in n additive shares, representing the order of the using mask. The output of the Adama transform is exactly the sum of the Adama transform of the shares. The idea is then to randomly sample the n-1 first shares and select the last one to verify the first relation. This countermeasure admits an additional cost. Indeed, one has to compute n plus 1 times the Adama transform. We present here the algorithm for the first order mask in Adama transform. We try to apply our attack to the masked version of the Adama transform and obtain no significant results. To prove that our attack has no chance to succeed, 
we applied once again the Welsh t-test for each pair of places. As we can see, now we do not observe any peaks. That guarantees that the class are indistinguishable, at least with a linear classifier. As a conclusion, we presented here a new side channel attack against HQC. This attack against the new uh, Reed-Muller Reed Solomon version of HQC requires less than 20,000 attack traces uh, for a successful attack. Uh, this attack represents a, tr a threat for the security of HQC, allowing an attacker to recover the static secret key. Uh, that's the reason why we presented a local control measure to, to prevent it. As future works, uh, as future works, we can try to reduce the number of attack traces required. Uh, for instance, by selecting uh, another distinguisher for the classes, for the classes, or by improving the physical set setup used to acquire tra traces. Another point of interest can be to target other functions of HQC. Uh, to find a new oracle and then improve this attack or even build new attacks. Thank you for watching this presentation. If you have any question, feel free to contact us.